Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name is Mark, I'm an entrepreneur and property investor. And in today's video, it's a Mentoring Monday. Why is it a Mentoring Monday, Nick? We want to bring back the old intro. He wanted to use the intro. That was all. So today is a Mentoring Monday and we're going to be talking about why the property market will not crash. Now, there are so many videos on the internet at the moment about inflation, how the property market is going to crash imminently. Now, I wanted to give the converse argument of why I don't believe the property market is going to crash anytime soon. I do believe there will always be ups and downs, but a crash, I can't see it coming for a long time. So today's video, we're going to go through the reasons behind my thought process in terms of why the property market in the UK will not crash. Now, if you haven't already given it a like, please give it a like. If you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing. Give away the dividends from our dividend portfolio every single month as a sweetener. And eventually we're going to give away what, Nick? A house. Brilliant. We're going to give away a house. Guys, let's go into why I don't believe the property market will crash. So my very first reason is that the government are essentially telling us that the property market isn't going to crash. And they have a lot of power, as you might know. So why are we being told this and how are we being told this? Well, the 95% mortgages are a very big thing. Now, essentially what that is, is 95% mortgage for anybody who wants to buy a house. The government is picking up a 20% tab on the that, not in cash, but as a guarantee to the bank to say that if the market does crash, they will pick up the tab. Now, why is that important to us as investors? Well, what that means essentially, and why it's good for us as investors, is that the government is stimulating the economy and stimulating house prices without actually having to spend anything. They're just saying that if for whatever reason we need to step in and pay off this debt, we will. But in the meantime, banks, please lend as much as you possibly can. Can. Now, the reason that for us is quite good and that gives us a level of certainty is the people who are in control of the environment and the economy around the housing prices and can control the outcome are also in control of putting this liability on their balance sheet. So for me, this is essentially a message from the government that house prices are not going to crash. So number one on mine is we have been told by the government without them actually telling us. <laughs> We've been told by the government that it's not going to crash. So I think that is a good sign. So first of all, number one on my list, we've been told that it's not going to happen. So number two, I think that there is a lot of money on the sidelines and demand is still at record levels. Now, as we know, house prices last month rose by 0.7%. That meant that I made £30,000 or close to £30,000 in capital appreciation alone. House prices are going to continue to rise because there is record demand. And there is record demand because people want to buy houses. We have not built enough houses and COVID didn't help. During COVID, we made a load of babies. We didn't build a load of houses. Everybody stayed at home. What do you think that does to supply and demand? Well, it means we've got more demand than we have supply as we have every year forever. And I recently read an article about some of the planning restrictions that are going to be lifted are actually not going to be lifted anymore. So there are some other things going on that I might go into a bit later on in the video, but essentially supply supply is still outstripped by demand. And nobody watching this needs to be a expert economist to know that if supply is outstripped by demand, then prices will continue to rise as long as affordability is there. And that is the key thing, as long as affordability is there. If people can't afford it, in fact, actually demand will probably drop, so it wouldn't make much difference. But yeah, supply is outstripped by demand at the moment. Interest rates are incredibly low. It's easy to borrow, and I think there's a lot way to run. And that brings me nicely onto point three, which I actually think is there's a long way to run for property prices. If we look in Sheffield, you can still buy a good three-bedroom house for 150k. If you look in Northamptonshire, 175k is going to get you something okay. Maybe 185 now. I mean, it's still very, very reasonable. If you look in, I don't know, I was looking in Banbury recently in Oxfordshire, you get a three-bedroom house there for 200 to 220k, something like that. And the average house price in the UK currently sits at 262,000. 
So, what does this mean? Like, if we look at these average towns, obviously this is buoyed a little bit by London. So I'm just going to take this average Middle England kind of area of 200 grand-ish, well just under, for a three-bedroom semi-detached house. Now, that would mean that if you were buying it on a mortgage and you were putting down a 5% deposit, you'd only need to put down 10k, which isn't a huge amount to save up. And frankly, if you can't get the 10k, then you probably shouldn't be buying a house. You're probably not diligent enough to be able to pay the mortgage. So for me, the 10k entry point is very, very reasonable. And then we've got a loan of 195,000. Now, what does that look like on a monthly payment basis? Well, 195,000, if I was borrowing at a normal mortgage rate at the moment of 1%, it's very, very cheap, but a 5% mortgage, you're not gonna get 1%, you're gonna get three. So actually, Nick, let's be a bit more scientific than that. Let's look up the interest rates for a 95% mortgage. Can you use your phone and just look one up for me? So I've got one in front of me at 2.2%. I've got a five-year fit. Oh, that's interesting. I've got a five-year fixed 90% mortgage at only 2.5% is reasonable. So let's say 2.25 and perhaps maybe you pay a little bit more or a little bit less. But we just need rough figures at the moment just to work out affordability and give us a gut instinct. So 195,000 times 2.25%. Um, times roughly by two divided by 12. So we're looking at about 700 pounds per month on the mortgage on a repayment basis. Now that's pretty reasonable. On interest only, it'd be much less obviously, but on a repayment basis, it's gonna be about 700 pounds a month. I think that can go up by about 50%. I think that can get to about a thousand pounds a month. The average rent is about a thousand pounds for a three bedroom house. So that can probably get pushed up a little bit. So I would be saying to myself that this price here, as long as interest rates stay low, from an affordability perspective can probably rise by another 50% or so in the coming years. Now, inflation is another thing and we'll talk about that in a second. So that's just affordability. But what I think we should also talk about is inflation. Now, inflation is essentially the purchasing power being decreased over time. And that also essentially means that property values will normally rise by at least inflation because it will cost at least 3% more next year to build a house than it did this year. So again, we're going to have this inflation inflation pressure on prices. And the great news about inflation at the moment in the UK is it isn't just on prices, it's also wage inflation. There's a lot of wage inflation going on. So at the moment, it's working in tandem. I actually think the economy has got this supercharge behind it. I can see a lot of growth in a lot of areas of the economy, and house prices is just one of them. But I accept that my opinion is just my opinion, but I would love to know yours down in the comments. So guys, if you've got any questions or any comments on this, please put them down in the comments. And I just want to through it one more time. I think, first of all, the government are telling us that they're backing the UK house prices and they're not going to let them fall. All the economists, the Bank of England, and pretty much everybody is saying supply is massively outstripped by demand. The average house price in the UK, although sitting at 262,000, buoyed by London, is probably only about 180 to 200,000 for an average house in an average area of the UK. And then inflation is pushing prices up as well. The affordability is there, interest rates are low, there's lots of monetary stimulus. I mean, what's not to love? about this environment prices, they've got to go up.